We're in St. Peter's Basilica. Standing right beside the Valtichino. In the crossing, directly under Michelangelo's dome, which is so high, it's breathtaking. And we're looking past the Valtichino, which is actually not easy to do, taking in an extraordinary, I, I, I was about to call it a sculpture, but it's more than a sculpture. It's architecture, it's sculpture, it's stained glass. It's the Cathedra Petri. The chair is bronze and it encases a older wooden chair. Which is believed by tradition to have belonged to St. Peter. It appears to float effortlessly in the air on a kind of canopy held by four church fathers. And it's not that they're lifting so much as they're restraining the chair. Right, which seems to be almost being assumed into heaven and all around pouring from either side of the chair pushing up from below are golden clouds that raise up the throne and that surround it and that almost seem to push it forward in a way too. It's true and just and almost to seep down into our world. Right, this kind of pouring into our world, such a Baroque thing. The spiritual is also clearly represented by these gold rays that move much more quickly out into our space, out into the cathedral. Through the clouds. That's right. right through the clouds and over and past the pilasters, the actual architecture of the church, and that frame themselves a cloud of angels that dance and spin, and they in turn frame this stained glass, this beautiful stained glass representation of the Holy Spirit, right. the dove, which is itself the centerpiece and in a sense the focal point of the entire cathedral. And that dove is represented within concentric oval shapes. So you get this feeling of rising and moving toward the center of the world. Well, that's right. It's a kind of almost visual multiplication yeah. and a kind of intensification until you reach the Holy Spirit itself. What always amazes me about Bernini and everything that we've seen in Rome is this way that he's willing to think about architecture in a new way instead of something that is heavy and encloses space. If you think about the Pantheon or just generally what architecture is supposed to do, he makes architecture into this porous thing almost. It becomes a playful stage. Right. It becomes something that can be in some ways overwhelmed by the kind of theatricality that he brings to his almost set pieces. Yeah, but he, he's like painted with, essentially using stucco painted with gold on top of marble. To it's me. an extraordinary mix. You've got the, the brilliant light of the stained glass window which actually is illuminated by the sky beyond. You have the gilded stucco, you have the bronze which is in part gilded as well, you have the marble which can be brilliantly white but also colored and it becomes this kaleidoscope of form and color and light and it's dizzying and beautiful but when I say dizzying I don't want to suggest that it's unfocused because it's tremendously unified. But and it, perfect in, in the scale of it in the abs. Mm -hmm.